Here we have a beautiful blank canvas of a schematic. And of course, what do we want to do with clean schematic sheets? Put tons and tons of components on them. I personally like to use the schematic to play with ideas or throw different circuit arrangements down. And so a blank schematic is an invitation to just start tossing parts in there. However, if you don't have any parts to put down, that may be a problem. We need components with which to populate our schematic. Thankfully, Eagle includes a large selection of components in every install. Let's take a look in our control panel to see all of the different libraries that are included. We click on the library section and we see a ton of libraries. I'm just going to scroll through quickly to show exactly how many libraries there are available to you. These are usually organized by manufacturer, although you notice these connector, the CON dash, those are usually connectors, but you'll notice a large number of libraries available. You'll also notice that green dot to the right of the library name. That means that the libraries are in use. You can populate parts. There is no way anybody is going to need all of those libraries at the same time. So my preferred method to keep Eagle running quickly and to keep my part selection manageable, I turn off all the libraries I don't think I'll need to use, and then I'll start adding them back in as I find a need for them. The best way to turn all the libraries off is not individually clicking on the green dots to turn them off, which is the standard way. Click, click. That's really obnoxious because there's like 300 libraries. Instead, you can go up to the top line of the libraries and where the green dot would be, you right click and you say use none. Clears it right out. I know that I like to use two libraries in almost every design. First is the RCL library, the resistor, capacitor, inductor library. And second is the supply one library, which has a plus five volt symbol, a ground symbol, and any other supply symbols that are likely going to be used on a schematic. So let's turn both of those on before we continue. I search them out and let's find supply. Here's supply. There's no reason supply two would be a bad choice. I just prefer supply one and its designs. If you're not sure if you have the right library selected, you can click on the library and open it up. And you can see all the different components that exist in that library, which is a nice tool for reviewing what might work for you and what might not. You can even click on the individual components and get a highlighted view on the right. So you can see that plus five voltage rail looks like an arrow pointing up. Now that we have our library selected, let's collapse this tree and go back to the schematic so we can start placing components. Once we're in the schematic, the parts dialog is this symbol, and we want to add a part. Click on that, and you can see the two libraries that I have selected. It's much more manageable than having a list of 300 here. Let's start by adding a resistor. Click on the RCL library to expand it, and I prefer the US resistor just because I like the squiggly lines. And you can see on the right, it shows you an example of what the schematic symbol will look like. Not only do you need to pick your schematic symbol, you also need to pick your layout footprint or the package that you're going to use. This library has included in it many different packages that you can select from. So we expand this menu and you can see all of the different options that you have for different footprints. If you're not sure what you want, then you can just highlight one and look at the footprint on the right. This is a through hole component. You can tell on the right when looking at the package that there's two green pads that exist for placing your through hole resistor into the board. And this particular one is placed closely together. So it probably will have the body of the resistor vertically positioned off the board. We're going to use an 0805 SMT resistor. So let's see if we can find that in our list of included components. And here we are, R0805. On the right, you saw the symbol that stayed the same because we're still using the same symbol, but the package to the right of that changed. And that looks like an 0805 resistor. I'm going to select this component by pressing OK. Now I can place as many of these resistors on the schematic as I would like. Let's say we're going to put down four. Perfect. And you can continue clicking, and they will continue putting down resistors, changing the reference designator R1, R2, R3, R4 for each incrementing resistor that you place. Once you've got all of the components that you think you will need, you can hit Escape, and that brings us back to the Add Component page. I'm going to also add a couple capacitors. 
So we're going to do the same thing we did for resistors, only for the capacitor. And again, I'm going to look for an 0805 capacitor in SMT package. I prefer the EU capacitor symbol because the US symbol has a curved bottom, which in my opinion is for polarized capacitors, but that's neither here nor there. Let's take a look at the EU capacitor. And again, we have to select our package. Even though we don't really care about our package yet, it's important that you select the package so that when you go to create the board, it'll be ready to go. And here we have the 0805. Again, the package looks like an 0805 SMT capacitor, and so I'm going to add it. And let's add two of these. Finally, to this schematic, I'm going to add a couple supply symbols. So I'm going to collapse this library, RCL, and I'm going to expand the supply library. And I'm going to want to select some supply symbol that I think looks good for my design. I'm not sure what my voltage rail is going to be, so I'm apprehensive to pick one of the fixed voltage rails like 3.3 or 5 or 12. So let's see what V plus looks like. Looks good. I wonder what VCC would look like. Good, there's no reason that one's better than the other. VDD, again, another arrow pointing up. This is all preference and it's all about aesthetics. So I'm just gonna pick the V plus and be happy with it. I'll place one of these and hit escape. And then I'm also gonna add a ground. This straight line seems appropriate to me. So I'm just going to add that. Great, so we have all of these components placed and we should be able to start connecting them. However, I will give a very big warning to everybody looking at somebody else's components. All of these components should be fine. However, mistakes can be made or your interpretation of what components you've been placing could be flawed. Now be a great time to pause and review some of the components that you put down trusting other people. You can also review them later, but in using other people's components, they're never to be trusted and you can't review them too much. We won't go over how to review the components right now, but this would be a great time to pause, take a look at the components, footprints, and schematic symbols, and make sure everything matches up. 